Hey everybody, um, uh, my name is Jose Rodriguez, um, my son's name is uh, Jose Rodriguez, uh, you guys know him as uh, Baby JJ, and um, this YouTube channel is basically going to document all of his progress, and um, not only his progress, but what it's like for us dealing with this tragedy and uh, still maintaining a household with with six other children trying to balance that you know and going to work basically basically everything that involves this tragedy um so for those of you that are new to the, our story um i'm going to recap um but first like i said um let me introduce myself as i did already my wife's name is cassandra um right now she is with baby jj at the hospital i'm here with the other kids um uh, and I figured there was no better time to do it than now. Because if you guys have kids, you know the only time to do stuff is when they're asleep. So, um, we have seven children together. Um, we're high school sweethearts. Our children are Sophia, she's 13. Chloe, she's 12. Um, Paul, he's 9. Elise is 5. Delilah Ann is 4. Uh, then of course there's JJ and then there's baby Olivia who's eight months now. So, um, it was February 20th. Um, we're originally from California. We moved to Oklahoma. So, um, trying to adjust to the weather and all that was, has, has been a struggle. Uh, February is pretty cold. You know, sometimes it snows. The weather just kind of sucks. But, um. Like I said, it was February 20th, it was Sunday, it was, it was warm. Um, it was about 2 o'clock, um, I worked two jobs, and, um, I was getting ready to go to my, my other job, so, um, I jumped to the shower real quick, um, the kids were playing in the, in our front yard, um, Sophia, Chloe, JJ, Delilah, Elise was inside but had come, was outside but had come inside, um, mom was watching them. I, I was watching them too. I mean, I just stepped away. I took like a three, four, five minute shower. It wasn't a very, very long shower. I was running late. Um, and then, um, uh, they were like, if you look at the news clips and stuff like that, you'll see a teddy bear in our front yard. That's where they were at. You know, there's a big window. Mom was making lunch and carrying, carrying Livy, breastfeeding her, walking around while she's, while she's, uh, watching the kids. And, um, she heard me get out of the shower. When she heard me get out of the shower, she uh, she walked away from the door, from the doorway when she was watching the kids, and she uh, was gonna change Olivia's diaper, and she got me my slippers. Uh, we didn't get that far. I I got out and I started hearing like like snarling, like real loud snarling, and and it sounded like a dog fight. So I uh, I kind of jumped to my window because um, we have had issues with those dogs before. They actually killed one of our puppies. And then they attacked our dog um, February 9th, where we called 911, tried to get some help, and they couldn't do nothing about it. And uh, the messed up part was, you know, that night my wife had told the neighbor, like, hey, you know, you need to stop letting your dogs out loose. You need to keep them on a leash or put up a fence because this could have been my baby. About 10 days later, it was our baby. Um, so they were playing outside, like picking flowers, just enjoying the warm Sunday being kids. And uh, I said, I heard the noises. I ran to the, to my window. Our house is like super small. So it was like literally like five steps. And uh, I got to the window. I, I popped my head out. I looked and I seen JJ being dragged off our lawn by uh, two or three of the dogs. I'm pretty sure it was three of them. Um, I just I just reacted. I mean, my wife says that I, that I started screaming. And that I ran, I, I don't really remember that. I just, I remember running and uh, getting to JJ and um, I I, uh, I started to kick kick the dogs. And uh, as soon as, um, as soon as I saw an opening, I uh, I slid, I slid in and I tried to cover JJ. I, uh, first thing I did was I secured his legs cause they weren't being bitten. So, at the moment so um, i grabbed I, I got his legs underneath me then i tried i got one arm underneath me i was covering his head his his head and face i can tell already um 
they had they had been mauled pretty pretty viciously um there was one dog that just kept coming and coming and coming and it was like when i was on top of him it was crazy it was like i'd hit one and then another one would come from another direction and then every time i hit one it just felt like i was getting rushed from another side and um the last dog had jj's arm in his mouth um uh, i kept hitting it i was headbutting it i mean at that point i ended up with the black eye and bruising all, all up and down my 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 uh my it was my right side and um because I had JJ covered completely with all my body and all that was left was for me to try to show them with my face. Um, so that last dog, it wasn't letting go. I put my hands, well, I put my hand into its mouth and uh, like far enough, kind of like into the throat and then it finally let go and I, I got up and I ran. And um, we, my daughters, my daughters had ran inside, you know, they ran inside for help. And uh, my 11 year old actually called 911. Um, and then, uh, you know, I felt like forever waiting for the ambulance. Um, when I picked him up, I seen he was scalped. And, um, you know, um, I I picked him up off the ground. His body was limp. And um, I thought he was dead. And then uh, when I turned him around, you know, he started screaming. So I, I, I you know, I mean, I got filled with hope. But at the same time, when I turned him around, I seen what they did to his face. They had literally ripped off his face. Um, yeah, it was, um, you know, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Um, unfortunately, my kid seen it. Um, you know, there was a neighbor across the street that helped a lot. She gave me instructions from the paramedics and stuff. And then uh fire department finally got here. I handed JJ to him. He thought JJ was dead, too. We were actually told JJ was dead until we got there and when we when we got to the hospital they told us um the severity of the trauma um i already knew i mean like i said i was the one that fought the dogs off and stuff mom had mom had seen him we we knew in our minds and that it was bad and we weren't sure if he was gonna make it um so they destroyed his mandible um they crushed a lot of his teeth um they like they said they ripped off the face they the, the the airway was severely damaged uh, when I was holding him. I could see him choking on his own blood. So like he was, at first he was like crying and, and screaming. So I knew that was good because he's alive. And then uh, um, then he stopped. And when he stopped, I was, uh, there was just a hole here. So like the skin was off or whatever. And I could see like the, his, his jaw, his teeth. I could see all the damage there. But I could also see into his throat. And I could see that he was choking on his own blood. Um, my mom's had seizures before. And stuff like that so i knew you know that to turn him on his side so so he doesn't choke on his own blood and that's what i did um and then um so the mandible was crushed the teeth were lost he was scalped uh his eye got lots of ex extensive damage they, they they had he had major fractures on all four of his orbital walls and the orbital floor um he had facial reconstructive surgery. He's still in the hospital. We're still battling this. And that's why we're documenting all of this. Uh, just trying to raise awareness. Because uh, dog bites are extremely common. And um, it just seemed really screwed up. You know, one of the things that, that the sheriff's investigator told us was. We're waiting for your son to die. If your son was dead. The owner of the dogs would be in jail already. So because JJ was strong enough to survive or survive by some miracle he doesn't deserve justice that just doesn't sit right with us and we're hoping to produce change by raising awareness by documenting his journey and and you know everything we're going through um so they uh they one of the surgeries was they harvested a part of his rib they used that rib to uh, rebuild his mandible his nose his cheekbones um he had skin grafts because he had a big old hole on his cheek where he was attacked um that's healed pretty good he's had skin grafts on the back of his head uh he won't have hair unless we uh we figure that out later you know um, right now he's too small for them to do the procedures that that they would need to do for him to have hair he won't even get some of his adult teeth because of this but um you know a lot of the fundraising that we're doing and all that that's what it's for we're we're hoping to help him with these things so he he could be confident and live somewhat of a sort of a, of a normal life, you know. Um, bullying is very real. We want to 
we want to try to prevent that and, and uh, give him give him whatever we can so he he lives a normal life or as normal as possible you know um oh, oh power's going out <laughs> we got real bad weather over here sorry for that guys but i'm not gonna re-record this because it took forever <laughs> but yeah um basically you know for those ask for all, all you guys that are new but like i said um you know this is gonna be about jj baby jj his journey his journey through recovery our journey through that recovery um you know seeing what it's like especially with such a huge family it's, it's no easy task i can tell you that it's um lots of emotional mental breakdowns especially because of the tragedy the ptsd everybody's in therapy and stuff but um the main goal is you know to try to get jj some justice and to try to produce change so that we we could you know hopefully prevent this from happening to somebody else or or help victims in the future get justice because somebody shouldn't have to die in order for somebody to pay for their irresponsibility you know um it's just not right it's not right you know my son's my son's life is forever changed because some somebody was too lazy to put their dogs on a leash or or too lazy and stubborn to build the fence you know um but yeah we'll get there eventually um like i said um you know welcome to jj's journey i hope that you stick along for the ride because we do have a long road um and you get to know me my wife our kids you know the, there's something else like that right now you guys think jj strong you'll see where he gets it from <laughs> but um yeah you know we look forward to having you guys uh follow us and and um just conversating with you guys and, and and getting getting different perspectives on things and you know uh we want to thank everybody that has shared liked supported donated all of it you know there's been an overwhelming show of love and support and we are completely blown away and so grateful for it like we never thought it would get to this point but we're extremely glad it did because now we could utilize the platform that we've gained to try to raise awareness because we don't want to see nobody else go through this it, nobody should go through this and the sad truth is that it's extremely common you know so um yeah i mean i'm kind of rambling now but i'm gonna cut it short here guys you know welcome to jj's journey uh i'm jj's daddy mom will be on later um we look forward to seeing you guys